Let's open this new reinforced concrete structure example file. To start modeling, we normally start off by importing a DXF DWG CAD. As you can see in the 2D graphics section, we have a specific object that once enabled and inserted, allows us to search and load our CAD file, saved somewhere on our hard disk. Now I can select my file and then prompted to set a scaling factor. Once loaded, simply set it into position in our workspace with a click or by pressing the F2 function key our keyboard. Now I can use this DWG or DXF drawing as a background reference to place our structural members into position. I'll start from the RC column elements for which I'll also define a 30 by 50 cm cross section. A first click activates the object and connects it to the mouse cursor. With the F5 function key, I can move the anchor node and with F6 and F7 I can rotate the object. Now I'll place it into the correct alignment on the CAD drawing using the snap nodes. These are dynamically generated by the software. A very powerful and intuitive CAD to BIM modeling methodology. In this case, I'll disable the snap to extension mode seeing as the intersection snap is more than enough to position our objects correctly. But we can go even further into building up our model from a 2D CAD file and use the DXFDWG Auto Detect tool. The Column Properties toolbox provides a specific option to generate objects from DXFs or DWGs. Look at what happens in our modeling space when I simply trace a diagonal line where the column member is represented. The program automatically detects the insert point and places the column section. Also notice that new profile sections are added if not already present in the software library. Let's have both of the 3D view and plan view open at the same time and adjust their size for better viewing. With the columns now inserted, we can move on to inserting our beams. We'll select the beam parametric object and, in the toolbox, set the profile section. Then start modeling the beam members. Again, the F5 key allows us to set the alignment axis, a first click sets the start point and a second click to define the beam extension. It's basically the same procedure to insert all beams but we can use the auto detect feature again to accelerate insertion using the magic wand tool. In fact, we can generate all other beams from the background CAD file with a simple transversal line traced over the beam width. All we need to do is set the beam depth. By inserting these beams, we can extend this second beam to the end of the porch and finally add the central beam. If we look at the DWG drawing, we can verify that some columns need to be reoriented. Once the column is selected, the object grip appears allowing us to rotate the object. With the columns and beams now correctly positioned at ground floor level, we'll continue with inserting the loads. Moving to the elements menu again, I'll now enable the reinforced concrete slab object and on the right, in the properties toolbox, set the thickness value, the material type and the load analysis data. This analysis data is simply a description, then as we proceed with the design phase, we can set all the other details. Let's see how the program, with this analysis, associates the dead load, permanent overloads, and point-specific overload values. In addition, we also need to specify the type of variable load. Of course, if we can't find an appropriate type of load analysis, simply add and create a new one. At this point, the object is selected and once its properties are defined, to insert it, just trace a simple line following the beam's layout. Just out of curiosity, let's look at the floor slab elements from a structural model's point of view. If we look at the calculation model, the slab doesn't seem to exist, that's basically because, in reality, the slab is simply a load, so the object we added is transformed into a system of linear loads applied to the surrounding beams. If we remove a slab, 
Notice how the load on the beams is dynamically adjusted. Now, with a simple copy and paste, we can duplicate objects and change the layout line of the slab joists. Notice how the loads are updated dynamically. Balconies are also simplified as loads and inserted by tracing the geometric shape of the balcony. When we get to the last node, a right mouse button click brings up this box allowing us to finish the element modeling phase. With the object correctly defined, the loads are updated too. Once the slab is defined, its equivalent in the calculation model is a simple load application. To access the slab calculation, you need to add a slab element and trace a line. Based on the areas we want to calculate, there is also a specific view in 3D called slabs, in which we can see how the adopted static model in the calculations will turn out to be. The ground floor is now correctly defined so we now need to define all other levels too. This brings us to the levels manager, a specific tool where we can define the number of stories for our building and their individual heights. In this window, we can easily define the height of each floor level. Once all levels are created, we can now move on to adding our structural members. Starting from the newly created first floor level, the first thing we can notice is that there are no references to other objects. So this is where the useful background option can support us to copy selections of objects or entire objects on a certain floor level, to other destination floor levels. A powerful tool that enables us to quickly copy structural members to other floors. From within the 3D environment, we'll also add other objects such as the external walls, objects that are normally loaded, so we'll have to specify their characteristics and properties too. A simple click to insert. Let's now see how to model the structure's rooftops. Simply access the roof level, and as before, using the copy function, We'll set the copying methodology to copy the selected elements and bring them to the rooftop level as our target level. Now in 3D view, we can select and delete elements or maybe add others. Let's suppose we want to add these beams. They'll serve the purpose of completing the roof modeling phase. If we need to decrease the height of these parametral columns, simply select them in batch by keeping the shift button pressed and then click on the individual beams or simply trace a selection window and filter down to the column objects. At this point, with a single operation, we can change the height of the perimeter columns to 2.00 meters. The interesting thing is that the connected beams are also updated. In this way and in a single step, we have defined the roof structure too. Now we can move on to adding the loads. For this, we'll select the slab element in reinforced concrete, and select the appropriate load analysis. As you can see, we are going for this type here and model the slab by specifying the joist direction. Let's move to inserting other objects with the design of our structural elements. The stairs object is composed of various elements. You can certainly see it better if I hide some of the objects that appear in foreground. I'll hide the elements that I don't need and then remove the floor slab section where the stairs object will be positioned. Once this is done, we can access the desired level and from the design menu, select the stairs element in reinforced concrete and the property toolbox, define the type of slab, left or right cantilevered beam and then define the geometry of the stairs object the type of composition, starting landing, the ramp, and the end landing. Then define the geometry of the stairs defining the riser height values, the number of risers and all relevant tread-related data. With a first click, the stairs object is locked to the mouse cursor with the F7 key, you can rotate it around its axis. Going back to 3D view, you can see that the ramps need to be positioned at their correct height. This ramp must have a final height of 3 meters, starting from an initial height of 1.50 meters. Now we need to define the stairs structure. 
So, at the intersection point for these two flights of stairs, we have to add a load-bearing beam which can be enabled from the properties toolbox. Now using the generate structure function, we can transform these objects into structural members ready for the calculation process. We may need to model a basement level. For this, we simply add the concrete wall object. On the right in the properties box, let's define the thickness and the material. With the walls now modeled, we can also specify the terrain pressure which is acting on our perimeter walls. Once selected, simply set the type of terrain from the combo box. At this point using the F5 function key, specify in which direction the force is being applied.